Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I am so super duper excited. <laughs> I'm so happy to be introducing you guys to my guest today, uh, Melissa Tias. Melissa is one of my teachers. She's one of my mentors. Um, she is one of my, uh, the people that I have done my certification and training with as um, a hypnotist and integrative hypnosis, amongst other things. I've learned so much from her in such a short period of time and continue to learn from her. I'm just so lucky to have her as one of my teachers and mentors. And you guys know how I feel. I always say, you know, good mentors uh, smart enough to know to have good mentors. And so she is one of mine and I'm just thrilled for more people to get to know her. Let me tell you a little bit about her before we dive into the conversation. Melissa Tears, she is a multi award winning author. She's a speaker. She's a coach and she is a hypnosis instructor. She founded the Center for Integrative Hypnosis in New York City, and she is also the co-founder of the Ethical Coaching Collective with Simone Soul. Uh, Melissa teaches classes in integrative hypnosis and certifications, which I am one of her students. Uh, she also teaches classes in neuro-linguistic psychology and coaching the unconscious mind, which is, you know, the work that I do with my clients. And uh, I get the benefit of continuing to show up even better, even more better. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to use inappropriate uh, grammar, um, you know, through coaching the unconscious mind in the mentorship that I do with my clients. Melissa is also a three time recipient of the International Medical and Dental Association's prestigious Pen and Quill Award for her books. She has four of them, but she's won awards for these three. Number one, integrative hypnosis a comprehensive course in change. And let me tell you something, you guys, this book is so good. And <laughs> you read this thing, you're just like, what is happening? Your brain, as I said, during my training with Melissa, I felt like my brain had grown outside of my skull because <laughs> it had grown <laughs> so much. It is an incredible book all about understanding change, how change happens, how to lead people through change. It's so powerful. And again, it has been just such a thrill to learn directly from uh, the source. Um, her second book, Keeping the Brain in Mind, Practical Neuroscience for Coaches, Therapists, and Hypnosis Practitioners. And then her other book, Integrative Hypnosis for Kids and Teens, Playing for change. And I can tell you, I have all of her books. They are so fantastic, just like she is. She's so fantastic, you guys. And it's super duper fun. You have two really curious people getting together and having a conversation. We both delight in being lifelong learners, being curious, helping people, um, helping people to feel more empowered and to create change and transformation and get results in their life. Uh, we're both, well, she's from New York, but she also has a potty mouth. So I'm from, I'm from Boston. <laughs> you know how that goes. I always say same Z is different, but you guys, I had such a blast talking with her. I hope you enjoy this conversation that you have some takeaways from it and um, just appreciate you spending some time. Uh, so here we go. Melissa Tia's. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Karen Kenny show. I am so wicked excited right now. I can barely contain myself. <laughs> so first of all, let me, because I often just start talking and my poor guest just sits there. So first of all, let me just say, Melissa Tias, welcome to the Karen Kenny show. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I'm wicked excited too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so you guys, if you paid attention, loyal listeners, first of all, thank you for being here. And if you paid attention uh, to the intro, hopefully you didn't skip it. But in case you did, let me just kind of put into context who I'm talking to. So this is Melissa Tias. Okay, Melissa, look at if I could just give her one label, I would just say super duper smarty pants. Okay, but there's a <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot that she does. So I've she's been called many things. Oh yes. Yeah but not no, that no, <laughs> multi-award winning author. In fact, I have four of her books right here. Uh, let's start with this sucker integrative hypnosis, right? A comprehensive course in change. Who doesn't want to learn how to change better, faster, stronger, like Steve Austin, astronaut, bionic man. Okay. 
number one. Then we have keeping the brain in mind, right? This is fantastic. This is about practical neuroscience for coaches and therapists and hypnosis practitioners. The anti-anxiety toolkit. Pretty much if you're alive today in this atmosphere, you should own this sucker. I will, I'll tell you more about that. And then this one, integrative hypnosis for kids and teens. So parents, people who work with kids, this suck is really great too. So all this to say is she's an expert in many things, right? She's written books. She's taught all over the planet. Uh, she has her own center or was the founder of the Center for Integrative Hypnosis in New York, which you'll hear her accent the more she talks. Um, and blah, 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 a bunch <laughs> of things which we're going to get into. She's won many awards. Um, she also um, has a cool new course, Coaching Ethical Collective, which we'll get into about that too. Um, so you guys just buckle up, chick, chick, buckle up for safety because it's about to be a ride. It's going to be a good time. Okay. So Melissa, one of the first things that I wanted to tell people is how I discovered you. Like, why are we talking right now? Like, why the, okay. are we here? Okay. How did you discover me? How did I discover you? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so I kind of heard of you like out in the, you know, the atmosphere as one does, I'd heard your name or whatever. And then I took my first hypnosis certification and the, the teacher in that course. So I was certified through the national guild for hypnotists, the NGH. And the person who was teaching that course kept saying your name and she was teaching us different things. And she kept saying, so I learned this from Melissa Tias and I learned this from Melissa Tias and I learned this from Melissa Tias. And I was like, who is this broad? Like, who is this lady? So of course I had to go find you. And I like to just, once I become fascinated with somebody. So here's the thing. I mostly do solo shows. Uh, I only give the real estate of interviews like literally once a month. And it has to be somebody that I'm either wicked curious about fascinated or inspired by that I just want to know more about or people who I think think are doing like incredible life-changing work in the world and I want more people to know about it and share. So that's kind of my criteria. Um, right. So I got really fascinated by you. And then I, so I got all your books. I got, I went and bought all the books, started reading, but then I was like, but I want to see you like, I, like in this, like we're talking this visual, right. I'm like, what does she look like? What does she sound like? What's her vibe? What's her energy? And then I started finding like videos of you. And right away, I was like, New York accent, check. I'm down for a good accent, right? <laughs> Potty mouth. I was like, check. But then here was the thing that really like, like all those things, the accent, the potty mouth, and then your endless curiosity, your enthusiasm and your like curiosity. I was like, my people, she's one of my people. And so- I, I wanted to share a quote that you said, and I'm going to shut up and let you talk, okay? So this is something that you said one time. You said, I've spent the last 20 years helping people overcome all kinds of issues, but some of the most profound shifts happen when people realize their personal power. When I teach people how to connect with the self that transcends, then I feel like I have a calling. And that was just like, oh, someone, that. yes, you said that. <laughs> I'm quoting you to you. I'm reminding. So, so <laughs> first of all, do you have any, any, you want to share anything about like this lifelong journey? Like, because here's the thing. One of the questions I always say is when I introduce people at the beginning of the show, it's like four books, award-winning this, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. psychiatrists mm -hmm. and all the experts yeah, oh come God. to this person. But here's what I'm most curious about. Okay. And in you having said this, so 20 years, 20, now even more than that, 25 plus yeah. years, right? Mm -hmm. Doing all this stuff. Okay. So let's start here. Here's a good place to start. <laughs> what were you like as a kid? What? <laughs> what were you like as a little kid? And do we see a connection between little Melissa and how we're here? How did we get from there to here? Um, totally. Because I, I think you said it earlier, right? Um, what, what you really resonated with was curiosity, which has been my driving force ever since I can remember, right? So curiosity is what got me into this field. It's what keeps me in this field. And while I know that a lot of people enter this field because they have like what they, what they would say is a calling to help others. 
I got into this field just because I was curious. Mm -hmm. I was always fascinated by altered states of consciousness, by the limits of, you know, everyday uh, perception and how we can bend that, how we can shape it. Um, So even as a really little kid, you know, I would be doing almost anything I could get my hands on or think of to alter my state from being obsessed with spinning at age three, like literally yeah. twirling and literally like a twirling until I would get so dizzy, I would fall down. That was one of my favorite, like my parents should have known then the shit that was to come because I was totally. And then like, you know, again, when you're like five, six years old and you discover like you can hyperventilate and that, and that gets you into this weird state. I mean, so I have been chasing the altered states ever since I can remember curiosity, the, you know, I mean, trying every religion I could get my hands on throughout my childhood, whatever friend I latched on to, you know, I come from a family with a a Jewish mother, a Catholic father, but total atheist by the time they had us five kids. So they didn't, they didn't feed me the answers. So all I had was the questions and they were amused by my constant obsession with, you know, is there a God? Isn't there a God? What's real? What's not real? And I can, I can say that I was, you know, Catholic for a while. I was Protestant for a while. I was Methodist for a while. I was kicked out of every Sunday school type (laughs) of thing that you, you know, because I just, you know, the questions were, you know, what drove me. So I can clearly see right from there to, you know, my you know, being a a, a, a lyricist rock. and a punk rocker and, mm-hmm. you know, my my angry tirades, you know, and all of the things that it's funny if I listen to some of the songs I wrote back then, I'm still bitching about the same things, you know, they're <laughs> about, you know, the, the powers that be, organized religion, you know, all of the, you know, mm-hmm. the, the constant, you know, <laughs> I mean, some of them are really applicable for today, sure. but so- So there's always been, I think, a link of curiosity, number one, fascination with altered states. I mean, first, just my own, my first hypnosis training was just another way to alter my own state, right? So I was still a rock and roll musician going to weird places like the the consciousness um, conferences from the noetic sciences and going to the Monroe Institute to learn to synchronize my brain and, you know, what the hell is this? And, you know, and, and still just, you know, it was a hobby. Hypnosis was a hobby for me because once I kind of got tired of altering my own state, I wanted to see how I can alter others. So I was that crazy chick in the back of like CBGBs, you know, like (laughs) hypnotizing people just to see what would happen. And again, just being curious. And so ultimately it became more fascinating than anything else I was doing. And so I kept learning and kept learning and kept learning like you. I love you know, continuing to learn. I'm a bit of a training junkie, you know, right before a class with you, I had been in an eight day training, you know? So um, I'm, you know, I don't think there's ever going to be a point where you and I are chit chatting and I'm like, I got it. I know all there is to know about the unconscious mind. That'll never happen. And because that'll never happen, we can just keep, you know, expanding our, our knowledge, we can keep experimenting, keep playing. And to me, that's what this is about. And I love that I get to do what I do. Um, I'm fascinated by what I do. I love what I do. And it just so happens that it helps people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, and, and, and so that kind of feeds into, you know, the deeper parts of us as humans in this interconnected space. So for me, that's, that's where it's at. You know, you mentioned this, um, this new class that I'm doing that I'm, I'm really excited about. Me too. (laughs) I know I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have you in it as well. Um, (laughs) Because I love your questions. I love your energy. I love, I love watching how you process, right? So as a, as a teacher, there's certain things you look for, Mm -hmm. right? That you can tell when a student is engaged. 
You can tell when they're, you know, they're taking in what you're teaching. They're balancing it with what they feel, what they know, what rings true. And then they're integrating and immediately making it their own. And that is the best we can ever hope for when we're looking for, you know, to share this stuff. Right. But what I'm really excited about with this new training is there's a huge piece that I am curious about. Okay. Can I, can I interrupt for a second? Because this is one of the other things that I was like, my people, as I think you and I have had the same kind of like, I mean, you on a much larger scale in New York, right? But and you're not necessarily a best kept secret because a lot of fucking people know who you are. But what I'm saying is it's like everything has always been word of mouth for me. Like it was yeah, like a too. name that got passed down and you and I kind of have this, let's call it interesting relationship with quote unquote marketing and promotion and the business side of what we do. Because right. we really, I, I don't want to speak for you. So always interrupt or correct me, but I feel like we were most interested in the work, being the practitioner, being in the curiosity yeah. of it and helping people or discovering things that, oh, like a fucking funnel and an opt-in and like yeah, all no, no, that no, no, stuff. No. So right. this this new, uh, one of the reasons why I'm also taking this training, uh, one, because lifelong learner, like you said, two, getting to go through this material for a second time with you. So I'm now certified certified in integrative hyp- hypnosis through you, which we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I get to do it twice, like with you in practice. But here's that other piece that you're just about to talk about um, yeah. with Simone Soul, which is that business part, that marketing piece. So so please continue. But I just wanted to. So, right. So, you know, the this is the big piece that was always missing from my trainings, no matter all, all over all these years. Yeah. I, I always say, this is what I guarantee. I'm going to teach you a kick-ass skill set. You're going to learn to be the best fucking practitioner you can ever be. Right. Then you're going to have to go elsewhere to know how to sell it. Because the truth is we don't like to think of ourselves as sales people, as business people. But if you want to continue to do what you love to do, you're going to have to get people to pay you for it. <laughs> and so, are. you know what I mean? Like oh, that piece, I mean, that piece. Yeah, that money, piece, yeah. that piece. And so one of the things, and I've, I've always had a kind of knee jerk reaction to it. Um, I started to pay attention to Simone because she's a, a, a good friend. She was, I was her first teacher. She used to sit on the couch at my center for, you know, for a long time, kind of apprenticing. And all of a sudden I see she's making millions of dollars. So I basically <laughs> contacted her and said, hey, kid, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? And so she's like, what you taught me? You know, I just charge a lot more money and I'm taking it in this direction, a direction that you never went. And so we hung out and she started talking to me. And I really, it was the first time that I ever looked at the business side of things with curiosity. Yes. Because she said, you know, this, if you look at your business as your art and that every output, everything, every post, every, you know, email is your body of work. And that it's just another way of connecting to people. It's of, an extension you know, of and, the and, love. Yes. Go right. Ahead. And so it was like, somehow that seems really simple when I repeat it. But in the moment that she said it, it landed. And then the next day on my walk, as you know, I, I walk through my woods every morning. Um, I, I, yes, people, it's the Bronx. We have <laughs> woods. Um, but you know, it, it really started to hit me how just that little shift in perspective, you know, and what Simone kept saying to me is, you know, only do it if it's fun, you know, that's my motto, that's my motto, (laughs) be congruent. And I thought, you know, when she kind of proposed this thing, I thought this would be amazing because, you know, we're doing it over time. So we get to really cultivate and integrate the learnings. I had moved away from that style of teaching uh, into like intensives that I kind of like. I like for my own self. But this was a how do we not only arm people with the most kick ass skill set, 
-hmm. But how do we actually write into the practices everything they're going to need to run a business? So in other words, not here is a cookie cutter script, follow this. It's no, let's bring out from inside the Mm -hmm. you, Karen, that makes you, you. How do we shine a light on that? So that, you know, people can immediately hear you in anything you put out there. How do we do it congruently so it doesn't feel like you're selling or manipulating or persuading? And instead, you are just sharing your excitement. So can I can I input here? (laughs) Please. One of the things I think also that's important and maybe we can touch on this is like, and that's why I said, yes, look, I, I'm 54. I, I I pretty much know who I am. So I'm, I'm wicked picky about who I spend big chunks of time with and who I give my money to. Right. Yeah. And I was like, OK, number one, I can just feel it in my body. Like I'm buzzing. I was like, oh, I'm wicked curious about this. I want to do this. I I, I want to, again, spend more time with Melissa, my teacher. I, I, I already followed Simone. So I actually saw she did a picture without saying to the public who you were. She just did a picture of the two of you. And I was like, holy fucking shit. I was like, is that Melissa Tears with Simone? I'm like, what are they up to? That's the first, I go, what are they up to? And then I was like, oh, and then like two posts later, it was like, something's brewing. And I was like, okay. And I just started yeah, paying. We, we were attention. seriously mind melding to everything we wish we had had when we started. We okay. start there. Go ahead. Yes. So yeah, I never asked my question because I'm, I'm melty. But here's the thing. <laughs> You were talking about pulling in from the outside, right? Like who you really are so that your marketing feels congruent. It feels this, it feels this. And one of the biggest things, and maybe we can touch on it too, is that how can you do it in a way where your nervous system doesn't freak the fuck out, right? Because Mm -hmm. do you want to touch on that maybe a little bit? Well, I mean, this is a big piece of it. This is probably one of the bigger pieces, right? Which is all about congruency and coherence. You know, it's about how do we get to a point where this just feels natural? Yeah. We're sharing what I do is, 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 is just like breathing. It feels so natural. How do I get my nervous system in line in a way that is, you know, um, organic, Right. So we've we were really trying to think of all of these these different ways of, you know, of of uh, nudging, nudging the nervous system, yeah. nudging it, nudging it so that it, it becomes and it it becomes a uh, generative. Yeah. Right. So it's like we can start the ball rolling and then your unconscious completely begins the pattern recognition system that says, OK. I'm going to take this change and I'm going to spread it out so that there is no difference between the work you're doing and the messaging you're doing, that it is the same thing, that the way you talk to, right, whatever the people, as you already know, because you do this show, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is marketing, honey, whether you realize it or not. Oh, no, it was. Well, it was funny because I was talking to a friend the other night and uh, we were talking about um, because, I, you know, I'm going to be teaching the podcasting thing in the student portal. And um, I said, you know what's so funny? I started a podcast because I'm a storyteller and I love to tell stories and I love to talk about spirituality and change and all this stuff. Right. All this stuff that I love. And I said, so for me, it was just a way to express myself. It was a way to do it. I'm like, it didn't occur to me until afterwards. Ah, this is also a way to promote. This is also marketing. This is also an extension of my it. business. So but bring because your I do storytelling it. to a post, bring your storytelling to a picture. It is the same thing. We want the same energy. Yeah. Right. In the yeah. same way. Right. I started this work because I was curious, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and then it moves from there. And so I would only ever focus on the things that I found interesting and fascinating. Exactly. And well, that's so what led uh, my learning. You know, people are like, well, uh, you know, what is your background in? Uh, you know, because I train <laughs> psychiatrists and I, I, I train, you know, a, a lot of, you know, academically uh, credentialed people. 
And, um, you know, when they ask, you know, so what is your, are you a psychologist, psychiatrist? I'm like, no, I'm an ex-punk rocker. Punk rock was where I came from. (laughs) You know, I'm like. Well, did you you know know that I'm married to a professional musician? I did not. Yeah, he's a he's a multi instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, producer. Uh, he's genius. I mean, since a little kid, he came through. It was like musician, like he knew from the get go. Right. So we have that in common too. That that love. And what's amazing is the more I do this work and learn from people like you, is that seeing like for example, I just did a reel. I just posted a reel today. And we're sitting on, we're sitting in the bed when our cat's there and my sweetie, this is guitar, this music instruments all over our house. So he's got a guitar and he's sitting in the bed and he's just playing a little something from the who, right. And he's like doing the thing. And all of a sudden he, he learns everything by ear, right. He's one of, he's got like supersonic bat ears, you know, echo. He's like a <laughs> dolphin and a bat combined. I always say to him. So like he's playing and he go and he hits something and he hits a weird note. And then he, all of a sudden he's trying to remember like, like, oh, where, where do I want to move my hand to make this easier? And I see him do this thing that he always does. And I was like, that's him accessing the part of the brain that that knows where the thing is. Right. And it was so great. And that's one of the things that we talked about with you. And I just realized I'd never told you I'm married to another creative, a musician, but watching, like being able to take this shit and apply it to the people in your life who you love, your clients, like. Sure, well, just noticing, here's the thing. You know, one of the skills you wanna cultivate is noticing, Yes. Right? And when I showed you, oh, okay, here's this thing. It's not really science, but it's it's just another input to gather information if people look up and to the right or people look up and to the left, you know, and I, I showed you that. And then I said, you're going to begin to see it everywhere. It's been right in front of you this whole time. But as soon as you know what to look for, right, you move your cognitive filters and you literally move the unconscious filters so that you begin to notice this stuff more than ever. You know, I was just um, uh, chatting with Simone uh, because I had replied to, uh, you know, a couple of emails and, um, uh, and, and, just pointing out all of the unconscious patterns, presuppositions inherent in, you know, uh, certain people's questions and their style of questioning. Yes. It's, I don't have to reach for that. I've cultivated my filtering system. So that's what I see. Right. And, and this becomes, it just becomes a part of what your conscious mind kind of lets in. Right. Because, you know, there's that old saying that comes from the research that you can focus on seven plus or minus two chunks of information in any given moment consciously. Right. Mm -hmm. That's about what. So so we chunk things. Right. That's why phone numbers, you know, 917-561. Right. They're (laughs) chunks. Right. So that we can remember them. And so what starts to happen is all of these things are context dependent. So when I'm working, that means when I'm teaching, when I'm doing my work, when I'm reading some questions from a student, Mm -hmm. that filtering system shifts to let in what the unconscious mind is telling me. All right. That's so fantastic. All right. Continue, but so fantastic. Um, So, so basically I'm just, you know, I'm just smiling as your teacher, smiling that you were able to get excited, noticing how he was processing inside. Once you get good at that and all the only thing to do with getting good at it is just noticing it, noticing it, paying attention, attention to how people are breathing, to their body language, to what their face says, to what their body does before they found the words. Okay. I want to interrupt for a second. Okay. I always interrupt intentionally. So <laughs> as a, I've been a yoga teacher for over like 25, I don't know. It's been so many years at this point. So I learned how to notice, right? I always say to my, my students, I've been saying it for like 20 years, notice what you notice. That's something, I mean, it's even on a t-shirt that they had made of all the things I say in class, right? Notice what you notice. Paying attention for me is one of my favorite things to do. Right. So like what you're saying is like, I'm just kind of giddy. I get excited because I'm like, oh, my God, paying attention, <laughs> first of all, um, 
I just want everybody who's listening to hear this. If you're in any kind of relationship, whether it's, it's a human being, the environment, your beloved animals, whatever, um, paying attention is one of the ways that we show love, first of all. It's also one of the ways that we gather so much information, what you're telling us, right? So when we pay attention, um, I always say, um, pay attention with intention, like say, like, I'm really going to pay attention. So noticing somebody's body language. So if you're a coach, if, you, if you're listening to the show right now, and like, you're a coach, I'm just saying, it's why I love to do things over zoom. Cause I want to be able to see somebody's face. I want to be able to see everything that you're talking about. So if you're a coach and I'm going to pass it, pass it back to you, all the things that Melissa is saying right now, I'm just double A man handsing it. Like, yes, notice how people, and I used to say that when I, I would teach a, I teach a workshop for yoga teachers. Um, once in a while, a, a, you know, a friend of mine who owns a studio will pull me out of retirement, right? Will you come teach our team? Yeah. Okay. And so I do a class called um, reading the room with a teacher's eye. And I talk about, I say the second somebody walks into your studio, class has begun. I'm like, so what I'm looking for is what's their energy level? Are they looking me in the eye? How are they holding their body? When, where do they, where do they choose to place their mat in the room? Are they trying sure. to get close all those things? Right. And doing it as, so now as a hypnotist or as a mentor, spiritual mentor, or in, you know, the work that you do, but I, I guess I'm just trying to make the point. We can use this broadly, even if you're not even a hypnotist, you can use right. this so let in me your just relationship. Say this, yeah, this is about, you know, interpersonal space, yeah. right? It, it really is a, all about that, regardless of what relationship you're talking about. I do want to speak to something else, though. One of my favorite minds in the business doesn't do any Zoom. He doesn't have in his in his place right now. He doesn't have the bandwidth, literally the is internet. That John or yes. that your teacher. So he he has been coaching over the phone. Fantastic for all these years. His auditory sensory acuity is is something to behold. He can notice auditorily more information. Then, then most people can gather from staring someone right in the face and listening and being in the same room. Like he's really, this is just what I'm saying. It's about practice, paying attention as a practice. Now, Ellen Langer, who I, uh, did you ever watch that video? Mindfulness over matter. Oh, when wait, I, I think I right. have, the, is she, did she write a book? She wrote many. Yes. I, I did. But she, she wrote Rhymes. one mindfulness over matter. I think I have it. Well, she wrote mindfulness and oh. maybe she wrote mindfulness over matter, but it's a quick video. And she talks about a lot of her research. She's one of my heroes. She's done amazing research. But one of the things that that we're talking about is in her noticing what's new and different. Her version of mindfulness is not what everybody thinks of when they think of mindfulness. It is the opposite of mindlessness. So it is about <laughs> noticing what's new and different in every moment. And that is what keeps you present. And so it also, I mean, uh, you know, if you just watch that video, if your listeners just Google Ellen Langer, L-A-N-G-E-R, and then they'll come upon a video, Mindfulness Over Matter. She'll cover a lot of her little snippets and highlights from some oh. of her pivotal studies. She's quite amazing. But back to the point, this is about, um, you know, cultivating uh, this interpersonal skill set. And for anyone who's in the business of helping others or working with others, you know, or as a um, parent, even. Well, yeah, certainly as a parent. And, and, you know, my last book was all about that, too. It was mm -hmm. for practitioners, but it was also for parents. Yeah. Playing for change, you know. And so I I mean, obviously, it's it's. Um, I think it's a skill set that has been undervalued in, you know, the kind of more traditional therapeutic fields. You know, if you listen to some of what used to be taught, um, you know, to keep your face a blank canvas, oh my God. which is the exact thing that triggers the vagus nerve, that there's danger. I know. They, they say don't, you know, keep that monotone voice. It is exactly the thing that triggers uh, you know, danger again to our nervous system. 
all of these these old ways that they had of 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 training um you know psychoanalysts and therapists and, and hypnotists you know, yes we now know it is exactly the opposite shit that you should be doing <laughs> well because right so for me especially growing up i mean and who hasn't i mean we all grew up we all grew up with some trauma right so and i know this to be true for myself but the nervous system is always asking this is what i always say it's asking that one question am yeah. i safe am i safe right. am i safe am i safe on repeat constantly so I'm always scanning my environment just naturally because of the way I'm wired, which I want to talk but, about that in a second. But also like think, think about this. You and I, even now, we're exchanging millions of bits of information, right? 98% of that, and that's generous, is outside of our conscious awareness. So what we are talking about cultivating is a very thin slice of our conscious awareness. But what starts to happen is the more we cultivate it consciously, the more it becomes part of the automatic system, part of what we notice and can then feel the, the effects of. So, you know, so much of your everyday interactions, not only with others, but even with your own self is outside of your conscious awareness. So by being present, by cultivating, you know, how, you know, what your unconscious mind is telling me, at least I can be aware of what the, the maximum amount I can be aware of. And it starts to shift a little bit. So you have ways of, you know, um, expanding what we can have access to of shifting the unconscious filters so that they're in line with what we're looking for. And of just being even aware of the fact that we have these unconscious biases, that we've been socialized and primed by our environment externally and internally, by our neuro associations, by our childhood, by our upbringing, by the beliefs of our parents, by the beliefs of the, you know, the current advertising executives at the time when we were in a very impressionable period. All of this has gotten in. And so that is why it's, it's vital. And that is just to go back to the coaching, the unconscious mind. Well, I, that that's is, one of my questions. So let's tap into that yeah. because it's one of the things that you do. It's really um, important is that when people talk about you, they say, I'm kind of looking, what, what did I say in my notes right here that you were, okay. So you are the center for integrative hypnosis, right? And so underneath that, it says, You've been trained and you train others in integrative hypnosis, obviously, but, and I was going to say, so maybe a little snippet about what that is, but neuro-linguistic psychology, and then coaching, I'm doing quotes for those of you, coaching the unconscious mind. (laughs) So tell us what you mean by that, about what makes it integrative hypnosis, because that's what you're known for, which it seems like it's like a umbrella or broad term. And then the heartbeat of this, when you're talking about coaching from the conscious, which I think is how a lot of people are trained versus yes. coaching from the unconscious. Right. Let's just like dive into that a little bit. Well, so, I mean, integrative hypnosis, it was, it was, you know, what I had to call my thing that I was doing, <laughs> that I was putting together. I wanted to have a big enough umbrella yeah. that for the next 60 years, I could continue (laughs) learning, bringing in this and bringing in that and expanding this and shrinking that. And it still fits under that umbrella, integrative hypnosis, right? Because what the fuck does that even mean? Okay, that's why I called it the Karen. Why I called it the Karen Kenny show, so I could talk about whatever the fuck I wanted to talk right, about. Right. So right. great. Go ahead. Yes. So you know, it's um, and and to me, it's anything, right, that helps people to change, right? Habituated patterns of thinking, of uh, feeling, of Mm -hmm. doing, of being, right? These are the habits of that, that we look through the, our lens and, and our perceptual filters, right? So all of that, right? And what is hypnosis except really utilizing, you know, um, communication, verbal, nonverbal communication to guide, you know, imagination and belief and to alter subjective experience, 
right? That's really what it what it's about. Some people would say it's, you know, guiding people into a state of heightened suggestibility. But, you know, you, you can use that uh, definition for some aspects of it. But the truth is, for me, I broaden out that definition mm-hmm. so that anything that helps to change things and everything has its roots in unconscious processing that's how we function all right can you please say that louder for the people in the back can you say that one more time (laughs) everything well there's not a single freaking thing that we think of you know in this book uh, by david eagleman years ago what was it called incognito maybe it was this book he says things like you know it's like um Your unconscious mind is doing the research, doing the writing, doing the editing, doing the (laughs) contrast and comparing and writing the whole fucking article. And then the conscious mind gets the headline. Okay. And the conscious mind basically says, hey, I have an idea. And take load. Download. or Or he says, basically, it's like, you know, a huge, massive ship. And then there's the person who's actually like steering it, right? And, you know, that person thinks he's driving the boat when really it's all the people below deck. And so you're unconscious. There's not a single decision you make. There's not a single thing you think. There's not a single thing you feel that hasn't already been mediated and processed in some way, shape or form unconsciously. So all these traditional coaching courses that work with like, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, accountability contract. We're going to get these, you know, we're going to get these like action steps and you're going to have to do these action steps and then feedback to me. And they're not taking into account all of the unconscious yes. obstacles, habituated patterns, fears, anxieties, you know, the unconscious value system that might be getting in, you know, um, hitched up and incongruencies and all of that stuff to me. And this goes way back when students of mine, hypnosis students of mine, even 20 years ago would be like, I'm thinking of doing this life coaching course. What do you think of this curriculum? And I'm like, dude, if someone could like follow these directions, like write up the action plan and then follow through and just have accountability, I can't imagine they'd be fucking needing you. Well, because they could do it by themselves. Right. But clearly they can't. Something is stopping them from having achieved these goals. They already put down on paper. Oh, so let's are, explore what's yes. going on under the hood. Thank you, because this is why I always say, like, I always say strategy isn't enough. Strategy doesn't cut it. If people, that's what you're saying. If people could just follow the steps, they'd fucking do it already. And this is And there why- are people that can. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that have gotten to the point, like, so sometimes there's you know, executive coaching, business coaching, where, you know, people are, are operating, you know, on full cylinders and they just want to optimize, or they just want to get to the next level in their business. This is not necessarily the people that I see, you know, I'm, I'm more like a mental health coach, if you want to put a label on it, you know? And so they come to me when those other things didn't pan out when they've, they've got the to-do list and then they don't do them. They've got their goals and then they sabotage. They, they say they want this, but then they do this. So then we have what's called conscious unconscious incongruency, which is the, you know, which is my bread and butter. Sure. Right. Milton Aries, my favorite hypnotist used to say, You know, my patients are my patients because their conscious and unconscious mind are out of line, right? They're out of sync. I always say the assignment is alignment. That's so great. great. (laughs) Right. Good one. So, you know, so to me, that's really what both integrative hypnosis was about, which is the old style, you know, where the old hypnosis training, right? And I think you might know what I'm talking about because like the NGH kind of uh, curriculum, which is direct suggestion, which is really about, I am 
the hypnotist, the powerful hypnotist. I'm going to make suggestions to you. I'm going to put you into this state where you're open to my suggestions and I'm going to make the suggestions because I'm the hypnotist. Sure. Right. And you're just this passive player. Like something's I, being done to you, right? right. And then you and that is, co-creative. That right. is not at all my brand of hypnosis, which it is, is not. You know, I go in, I, it's an invitation to come with me, you know, not a command. I'm going to bring out your internal resources, right? I'm, you know, so that th- those suggestions are going to really come from you, the client. And the more dynamic form that I'm known for, right? The conversational hypnosis, otherwise known as coaching the unconscious mind. <laughs> um, you know, that that is where, as you know, you you this is a co-creative process. Yeah. I am not the expert here. I'm an expert on this particular skill set, and you, the client, are expert on yourself. You, that's right. The problems, the solutions, the that's resources, right. the old patterns. And so this is what we we come together to create. And that's really once you can cultivate, as you said, noticing what you're noticing, that is one of the key ingredients to doing this type of work. You know, being able to not just notice, but, you know, as I was saying, it's kind of improv. You're just playing with the other person. Well, and you're you famous can't... for always, yeah, you're famous for saying this shit is all made up, right? It like is this is made up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny because everyone, you know, depending on where they're at, takes that and 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 internalizes and it means something to them. But sure. really, we can extrapolate out into all this shit is made up. I mean, our brain is making up this shit right now. Of, co- of course. What we what hear, I what we see, what we think, it's all made up. Our perceptual filters make it up. Our brain makes it up. Our well, history. and I go ahead. No, I and th- this is one of the reasons why I love you. It's so in line with it's like it's just so resonant. And I'm not doing a comparison thing. I'm saying like it's why I'm like I, I claim you as one of my mentors and teachers is because I'm like it's so resonant to my heart and feeling like I don't want to disempower people. I'm not here like the the fucking mighty Oz behind the curtain who's gonna heal everything and fix everything because I'm the almighty powerful Oz. It's like no, it's like let's play together. Let's go. No, into and you, together, and like- you know, and we're the women that pull the fucking curtain aside. That's right. And go look, people. That little, that little man driving this thing is you. That's right. (laughs) That is a hundred percent right. And that's why in your work that you're doing, you teach people, this is what I love. And, you know, I'm one of the people that like, also, I can't learn if I don't understand why the fuck the thing I'm doing is working. Like, I always have to understand like, okay, I'm doing this. Tell me why I'm doing this. Like what is happening? And then once it's like, there's those games when you drop a piece in and it goes, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Yeah, no, I I, I I'll get stuck. Like my brain will stop and it will freeze and go, but tell me why. So I think what you're saying when you were like, we pull back the curtain, what you do in your work that I love so much, and it feels very resonant because it's what I, I have tried to do in my work over the years is to empower people to not create codependence, right? Yeah. But to also explain to them, this is what's happening. Like one of the gifts right. of this work in context of what I do as a hypnotist and a spiritual mentor is so often people show up and they think I'm fucked up. I'm broken. Yeah. I'm so wounded. I'm whatever. And one of the things that you say so powerfully is about how, and maybe we can touch on this. I know you said to me like, oh, you're going to get me in trouble with this question. But um, when we talked about it earlier, you probably don't even remember. No, it was I during don't. our training. It was during our training. But um, I always try to say to people, you're not broken, right? But you have is patterns. What you have is habits. What you have are uh, conditioned ways. Yeah, your being. brain is working perfectly. It has taken what you do with repetition and automated it for you to conserve energy. That is how the brain runs. That's how we've evolved. So, you know, to, to point out, and I'm, I'm like you, honey, I needed to know how it worked, which is why I dive into rabbit holes all the time. It wasn't enough for, for me to know that it worked. 
I needed to know the mechanism by which it worked. Right. So, you know, that's what led me to study a lot more about neuroscience and about the brain, because I wanted to know how when I did this thing and this person no longer has their phobia and yet mainstream psychology says you can't do that. I need to know what just happened. How is it possible? And then I search. Right. I understand the repetition. We understand that, you know, that neurons that fire together, wire together. Okay. We get that piece. Can I interrupt you really quick? Yeah. Because you just said the magic words, right? Neurons that fire together, wire together. And then the other thing you say, I can't remember who said it, but practice an emotional state until it becomes a neural trait. That was um that was Hansen. Uh Rick Hansen, but who here's the reason his brain and resilience. Yes. Yeah. But you have the, I, I wanted to interrupt you the whole time during training because <laughs> you have these amazing pictures to your left. Are those neural networks being created that, that artwork down on the floor? Are those neural networks? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's the neurons. I took that photo and then blew it up on a canvas. They're all over you. That's like, it. So that yeah. is the photo that I took. I took this photo. I at... wanted people to see it. Is it heavy? Could you just show people so they can see that like this is like the brain in action. These right. are like neurons firing together, correct? That's right. And so, and this is on a piece of canvas from my center. As I love know, it. I close my center. So a lot of the artwork and tchotchkes and things like that are, are, are from my center. You know, what you can't see is everything that's in front of me, the cognitive bias codex and all of this stuff, but, but that's your brain working perfectly. Like it's doing what it's designed right. to do. So, so that's one piece. And, and we understand that that's been well researched. We understand yeah. why repetition does that. What we didn't understand until probably five, 10 years ago, really, is how these one session wonders happen, how we can use something from NLP or even the tapping EFT or EMDR or any of these different uh, forms of therapy that produce rapid results fast. What the hell is going on in the brain? And that is what led me to study memory and memory reconsolidation and all of these things that gave me an understanding that allowed me to create protocols and interventions based on a new conceptual frame, right? So to me, it's so funny because... I, in all of these camps, whether it's therapy or coaching or hypnosis, they, they have these factions, <laughs> right? These factions. And, you know, and they're like, you've got to get to the core beliefs. Otherwise, <laughs> nothing will happen. You've got to get to the initial sensitizing event. Otherwise, nothing will happen. You've got to get to the cognitive dissonance. Otherwise, nothing will happen. You know, they all are arguing. And I always say it, it is it is exactly the blind women and the elephant, you know, um, which, which part am I holding on this? Right. And then arguing about tail. what an elephant is like. All right. Well, one of your favorite quotes supposedly is uh -oh. convictions are what you get when you stop thinking. It's so funny. Yes, it is one of my favorite quotes. And I couldn't find who said it. The only person that kept coming up for Google was myself. And I'm like, so, oh my God, I keep saying this is my favorite quote, but I can't. But maybe it came from you. <laughs> but maybe I maybe it came from me. And it's so funny because I put it out there on Facebook. I'm like, people, does anybody know who said this? And my friend Michael Watson, I actually misquoted the quote. <laughs> of course i don't even remember what the original is but i think it's like yeah i can't remember but here's my point but it wasn't it convictions up. it was something else but this is what you're describing <laughs> is you got to do this first you got to do this first right. so, you know when you get taught and then you get locked in you get locked into this is the way but that's but not also, that interesting to me no and getting locked in what people don't realize is what happens when you get locked in is you shift your filtering system to confirm it exactly and everything else that doesn't fit with that current belief get you, you don't e it doesn't even pass the filtering system so Milton Erickson, I've said this over and over. I love this quote. He said, 
therapists, and I'm just going to say practitioners, right? Sure. Don't can't afford the luxury of having a theory. <gasps> Isn't that great? Oh. <laughs> because it it absolutely locks you in. Well, and okay, but wait. The world through that filter. So whenever you know what I mean. So I like a frame that is so fucking expansive. Me too. That it includes everybody. And I, I, I point this out. I've done a few keynotes like this where I'm just like, look, everybody. Envision it as one neural network <laughs> that includes the beliefs. It includes the initial sensitizing event, the subsequent sensitizing event. It includes the values and the hierarchy of values. It includes the blueprints. It includes the emotions. It includes how about it's all connected. And we're all doing good work because you can get into that neural network from any one of these any doors. Door. Yes. That- well, so it's, I was thinking about when you were talking like a spider web, when the spider yeah. touches the web over here, it like, that's, it's like, it's all, it's all connected. That's it's right. all connected. I mean, and that's why you can, you are really known for, I mean, you're known for a lot of things, but you, there was just a video the other day, this woman had a, like a fear heights for like 20 years and you had one session with her and she was like, like what the fuck? Like how? Oh, wait, and that was that was a, a, a tw- that that was a twenty minute session because I was tasked to do these fifteen minute demos. Yes. And at first I was like, "What? I don't put time like that on my thing." And then I was like, "How can I make this fun?" And so it became like chopped. Like yes. I was like, I would be like in between each one, I was like cracking my knuckles, like, <laughs> oh, "All right." And then there were some where it was seven minutes, and I'm like, "And that's time." Bam! You know, I wanted like a big bullhorn. So with her, she was the one that I went over, and I went over because I saw there was just a little bit, like. I could have gotten the change at the 15 minute mark. And I was like, I just want to shore this shit up. Yeah, I appreciate oh, yeah. that. I appreciate that. <laughs> so some that. of the other ones that are going to come out are even funnier because it's literally, it's like, I kept calling it speed dating. It was like, it's like it dating. is, it's like, and <laughs> next, and next. All right, so you guys, I, 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 listen, I could literally talk to you for like hours. But I know that you you have something you need to do today. So there's a couple of things yeah. I want to say. And um, number one is that, so if you are a mental health practitioner, if you're a therapist, a psychiatrist, a psychoanalyst, social work, all that stuff, you're, um, you have a training coming up. Is it in mm, February? Actually, when? nope, nope, nope. I don't. You're I, not going to do it. I, I'm not going to do it yet. I, I have a lot on my plate. I'm giving this okay. coaching course the, you know, the attention it needs. Okay, perfect. And so I, so I don't, I'm not doing the integrative hypnosis yet. But that will be something that when you do offer it next is going to be specifically for people who are already in the the fields that I was just mentioning. They're already in the fields. They already have a practice. They already have a thriving practice. They don't need, right. And they can just integrate it in because I, I feel like at this point, because I'm offering this coaching course, we're going to talk about that next. Yeah. Anyone that wants it and my student portal, I feel like now I can dig a little deeper into some of the more sticky uh, mental illnesses that, you know, a lot of uh, coaches and people just starting out as hypnotists are not licensed to work with. And so I, I, I tend to pull back from that. And then there's, you know, there's quite often times where I'm teaching groups that have more therapists and psychiatrists and that's where I get to play in in those deeper spaces so so yeah that'll that when okay. I resume doing that that will uh be and so, I'm thinking of just doing group kind of coaching courses and so I'm I'm kind of rejiggering my whole form yeah, and, and yeah. expanding out in a in in this this different field you know I I'm teaching this big coaching course with Simone, but the truth is I was never really in that world. I've been teaching, coaching the unconscious mind for many, many years, but it's mainly been, to, you know, towards teaching therapists, yeah. teaching hypnotists, these, these techniques. And so I just kind of, I just entered the, into this world that seems almost like an interesting foreign land to me. Well, welcome to the weirdo <laughs> foreign land. We, we're happy to have you. 
Um, but it is, I mean, I say same Z's different. That's the thing I always say. It's same Z's different, right? So, um, but we're so lucky. I mean, I've already been, I'm already certified through you, went through it and I'm going to do it again. You guys listen to the sound of my voice. If you can hear the sound of my voice, listen up. I'm paying to do it a second time. That's how fucking good it is. Cause I just want to be able to be immersed in it and learn, learn, learn. Well, we also know- it's, it's three months. So we're going to be able to dive yes. really deep and get a lot of integration and feedback. And yes. you know, we're, as I said, it's, it's, it's a different form, a different format. And I feel like you're going to really you're going to master a lot of these, uh, a lot of these things. I'm psyched. I'm psyched to learn and to also spend some time with Simone and you guys for listening. Simone soul is, um, she's a coach. She's a marketer. She's a hot shit. She's really fun. And bringing Melissa and Simone together is like joyful marketing is her thing. And so she's taken something that you and I naturally shy away from (laughs) and absolutely made it her playground. It is her jam. I I mean, like a sales letter from her and I am like, what? Yeah, it is. Oh my God. Initially, when I read the sales letter she wrote, I got on the wait list. (laughs) You're like, I want to sign up for my own thing. (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, honey, that was so good that I signed up, you know? Yeah. So here's what I'm trying to say, you guys, if you're a coach or if you're somebody who wants to learn this stuff, right? This it's called the BFCC, the best fucking coaching course. And it's offshoot, which is um, the ethical coaching collective, which you, you get certified ah. through doing it. Like I said, we we could literally keep talking about so many things and expand, but I just want the listeners, if you're interested in this, different ways to find you. Um, all your links will be below on Instagram. It's just Melissa Tears. And on Instagram, you guys, Melissa does these great things. She had a series where she as you can hear, she's a New Yorker. So Melissa likes to get in there and get shit done. So it's like, everything's like in a New York minute, right? Like in a minute, how can I create change? Right. So it's right. pretty change fantastic. In a New York minute. Got it. And now she's also doing these little IG series, these reels called fix your shit. <laughs> so I wait, mean, it's- here's the thing. My daughter has to make the cover for fix your shit, but the truth is, yeah, I'm just having, I'm trying to see if I can have fun because as you know, I wasn't on Instagram except for, I don't know. I joined a month or so ago because Simone forced made me. You. Yeah, made and she you. said, just try it. If it's not fun, don't do it. I only want you to do what's fun. I need you congruent. And so it's been like, what's fun here? You know, what can I share that's fun? Oh, this, this gets me to look at my morning walks differently. And it really does. Right. Because all of a sudden I look up and I'm like, that is so beautiful. I'm going to take it. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share that image of that sunrise. And, you know, and you really do start to look at things differently. I love that subtle shift in how I'm experiencing, you know, the world. Well, which reminds me, um, it's too late because by the time this one comes out, it'll already happen. But this week, so on Thursday, my podcast episode that's coming out is called Door Stopper Words. And I quote you, I credit you, and I talk about how we did that session on the procrastination thing. And you said to me, you got to stop calling it marketing and promotion. Those are door stopper words for you. Uh, you got to start calling it. And I said, well, for me, I just, it's like, you know, cause I'm into Merlin and magic. And I'm like, I just want to share the magic. And That's you're like, yes, it. you're only sharing what you love. You're sharing the magic. And I'm like, yeah, I want it to feel like I'm casting spells, like love spells. And you're like, you're casting the spell. <laughs> so that little shift is what you're talking about. You helped me to kind of see it. And you like, no more using the words like marketing and promotion, not in a finger wagging way, but you're like, because it gets in your way. Yeah, it was so that- tripping you up. It was clearly tripping you up. And, you know, it trips a lot of people up because if you think about, you know, all the neuro associations that we have connected to that, even, even ones that we are in no way, shape or form conscious of, then you'll understand the resistance, right? So let's bypass all of that and let's do what feels fun, what feels magical. L- luckily, we live in a world today where all of the old practices, right, of the things that you had to do are no longer relevant. People are just showing up, they're sharing what they love, and that's giving that, that's literally giving them a brand. Yeah, and, exactly. Right? Said, and just getting paid to be yourself. Like that's, that's what it, it is. That's it, honey. Yeah. That's it. Because the truth is, not a single person in this universe 
can help someone in the way that you can. That's true. Mm -hmm. Not a single person in the universe can help someone in the way that I can, because it's all about who you are, who you've been, who you are becoming, Mm -hmm. everything you've learned, all the magic that you've been brewing already right? Your perspective, your heart. And so once you really start to look at that, because too often people, because I coach a lot of people, you know, and too often they'll be like, yeah, but I mean, so-and-so is already doing that in this niche. I'm like, what? But they're not you. Like you, nobody has your voice. Anyway. Yeah, we got to go. But all right. So I want to let you go. I want, look, I'm already going to, I'm just going to put you on the spot. I would love for you to come back another time when you have more time, because you have unique perspectives on things like, um, that I wanted to get into like the addiction treatment industry and about addiction being habitual. And like, you just have a really unique lens about a bunch of things that I would love to share with people again, I'm not twisting you. I'm going to put you on the spot, but I would my love to have you My arm is not twisted, back. honey. I, you know, okay. no one twists my arm. So I would love to come back when I have more time. Yes. Because I like hanging out with you. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much. This has been such a pleasure. You guys, you can find Melissa online. Um, she does have melissatears.com, but if you really want to find her, it's, can you say it right? It's a center it's for- in- Center for Integrative Hypnosis. The melissatears.com site is like, it's been around for like, like, like 15, <laughs> it's been around for 20 years or something. And the truth is somebody told me not to let it go just because uh, it's been grandfathered in with yeah. all these SDS. So ultimately it's my about me page. Yeah. But it's the only website (laughs) that I can edit because a kindergartner can edit it. So part of me won't let go of that little bit of control. (laughs) Yeah. And the last thing I want to say that's really important, you guys, is that um, Melissa, if you study and train with her and whether you do it, the, the different ways that you can do it, she has a membership, she has a student portal, you get ongoing support. Not a lot of coaching programs will say that. And I'm going to say this as well, honey, if you are a practitioner already and you join the student portal, you don't, that is open to anyone because I put foundational videos up. There's so many videos that'll get you up to snuff, up to snuff. Is that, (laughs) Um, you know, like up to speed rather, you know, with at least the rudimentary foundations to have fun in the portal. And so, you know, um, and you can come in without having trained with you is what we're trying to say. Please. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, for all of my people that have trained with me, I do ongoing support that doesn't practice cost nights. Right. So uh, that's learning. practice nights. Yeah. And learning how to create uh, states like well, let's take it back. We'll finish where we started. So you even do like the, the Sunday psychedelic things where you're teaching people how to access yeah, you altered, missed one altered, yesterday. States, altered states of mind without doing drugs. So like, so you're basically going back to those roots of that little whirling dervish, like going, yes. like, how can we create these experiences without having to. Well, and like the student portal is, is my lab. And as you know, I've been trying to get everyone to treat it as such. So, you know, like spotlighting students that want to try something out, you yeah. know, Lily just tried out that event creation because she put in a proposal to teach it at a conference and she wanted feedback on it, you know, and that's what, you know, three or four people have done already basically used it to workshop ideas so you know so i i'm going to be expanding that aspect of it in a big fucking way um and yeah and 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 i don't want to say it but i will say it and raising the price uh come come the new year um because you know it's as you know it's a nominal fee um because i want to spend a lot more energy and it's worth it making it better It's worth it. You guys, I always say, yeah. So I always say when super smarty pants, people are saying super smarty pants things. I am smart enough to listen. So you guys, I hope (laughs) you've been listening closely to my beautiful guest, my, my teacher, my new mentor, who I'm I'm so grateful. I already just love her. I just love her to be so happy to share with all of you. So Melissa, thank you so much for your time. Uh, It was fun. My pleasure. You know, I'm I'm like imagining your audience, uh, because if they love you, then, you know, then they're good. They're good by me. 
Well, all right, you guys, you know, I always end the show by saying wherever you go, may you leave yourself, the people, the place, the animals and the environment better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Yeah, I am. Good one. <laughs> guys thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the karen kenny show <laughs> i super duper appreciate your time friendship and support and look if something that i shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours i'd love to hear about it so please tag me on facebook or instagram or ig stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days and let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. -E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing. <laughs>